This is the Soetbansberg region of South Africa, a part of the country that Van Damme traveled through in 1916, almost a hundred years ago. He was a technician at the Transvaal Museum at the time. When Van Damme found his specimen, he sent it to the Albany Museum to John Hewitt, who was the arachnid taxonomist working there at the time. He looked at it and described it as a new species, Idiotheli pluridentatum. Hewitt noted in the description that the spider had a trapdoor on its burrow. Later on, Richard Gallen, when he revised Pteranoculus in 2002, examined the specimen and concluded that it was actually the same thing as Pteranoculus lugardi, and for that reason, Idiotheli pluridentatum is no longer seen as a valid species. Pteranoculus lugardi is quite a widely distributed species in southern Africa. There are records from Botswana and Zimbabwe, but it's only ever been collected once in South Africa. A single specimen, female, collected north of the Sopansberg Mountains in 1916. In spite of extensive sampling effort in South Africa with several spider survey projects, nobody has managed to find the spider again. We're hoping that with some careful insight and with some hard work, we'll be able to find them. In order to effectively conserve the species that we've got in South Africa, we need to know what species we have. For that reason, it's important to do surveys like this so that we can find out exactly where the different species occur. That allows us to create protected areas where we need to or to take other conservation actions when necessary. A hundred years ago, people didn't have GPS's or any means of taking precise locality information. All that Van Damme's record for Lugardi says is Nwanedzi River. We had to find the precise locality where these spiders occur. In order to do that, we examined maps of the region. We looked at roads where, which might have provided access at the time. We went out to that area and found that the habitat there is actually quite distinctive. And that's where we decided to focus our search efforts. It wasn't long before we found some of the more common baboon spiders that occur in this area. We also found some interesting insects and other arachnids, but would we find what we were looking for?
After several hours of turning rocks in the hot sun, we made our first discovery. A single subadult spider living under a rock. The big surprise for us was that her burrow had a trapdoor lid on it. This is something that only idiothelia are known to do, but this species is described as a pteranoculus. The trapdoor is half moon shaped and relatively robust. It's actually quite thick. The idiotheli trapdoors that we normally see are very thin and flimsy, making more or less a simple flap over the entrance of the burrow. We suspect that with time, soil had been deposited on the lid and given it that extra thickness. The reason these spiders make trapdoors on their burrows is so that the burrow is camouflaged, so that predators can't find it easily. But that also makes it very difficult for us to find them when we're doing research. For that reason, we need to employ other methods, such as pitfall trapping. It also takes a lot of hard work turning rocks to find the odd specimen. Even though these spiders appear to be very rare, it's quite possible that they're abundant, just that you can't find them. When we found the spider, we weren't sure what we had. The burrow with the lid was telling us that it was an idiotheli. However, the only species that occurs up here is idiotheli nigrifulva. When we looked at the underside of the spider, it wasn't black. Idiotheli nigrifulva is completely black on the underside. Did we have Pteranoculus lugardi? Our first attempt to find these spiders produced a single subadult and a single small juvenile specimen. Not enough to be certain about what we had. We needed to come back and find the adult males. Rock. Here's the specimen. So here's the silk retreat that was underneath this piece of old rusting drum, and there's the lid. Digging up the hole here. Yeah, uh, now it comes out. That's a little trapdoor. Yep. Turned. Goes that way as well. Oh, there it is.
conditions are very dry at the moment so we haven't actually found any of the spiders that we're looking for in the pitfall traps that we set out. From my experience with collecting megalomorph spiders, rainfall is critical for adult male activity. After two days of finding absolutely nothing, we had rain. On day three, we went out to check our traps for the last time. There was a tense excitement in the air. Conditions were right, but we weren't sure if we were going to find the spiders or not. And then, while checking our first trap, Tucky said it. Here guys, I've got it. So this is the third day, our last day on this trip and we had some rain yesterday afternoon. We've come out and we've checked the traps this morning and we found what we're looking for. This is an adult male of the Pteranoculus lugardi that you get here and uh, the first time an adult male has been collected in South Africa. Can't wait to get it back and have a look at it under a microscope. Baboon spiders are protected by law in South Africa. They are threatened by collecting for the pet trade and habitat destruction. Permits are required to collect and keep baboon spiders for any reason. If you see a baboon spider in the wild, appreciate it for what it is, take a photo and leave it unharmed. Our discoveries confirm that Pteranoculus lugardi is a trapdoor maker. It is the only member of its genus known to do this. This has significant implications for our knowledge of baboon spider classification and evolution. Imagine how much more is out there waiting to be discovered.